Hi friends, in our last session, we have completed with selection of electric motor. Now in today's session, we are going to start with our new chapter, that is chapter number two, regulation of speed and feed rate. Even this chapter is called as the design of multi-speed gearbox. In today's session, we are going to see aim of speed and feed rates and why we need multi-speed gearbox. This is Fezan Kagri and I welcome you all to a lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin with our first topic that is aim of speed and feed regulation. Now why we need to do speed and feed regulation? So the first major requirement is that we require a minimum cost of machined component, right? So for that, what we need to consider? So we would say that various machining operations are performed, right, on a machine tool, such as turning operation, spacing operation, taper turning operation, drilling operation, threading operation. Now, all these operations has to be carried out at such values of cutting speed, speed, and depth of cut that it ensures minimum cost price of a machined component. Okay. So the main parameters for controlling the cost price are three main parameters that is cutting speed, feed and depth of cut. Now there is an expression for a machining cost which is given by the equation as you can see on your screen. C is equal to CMT plus CNPT plus CTC plus CT. Now in this as you can see CMT represents the cost of machining time. C and P T represents the cost for non-productive time. C T C represents tool changing cost per component, and C T represents tool cost per component. So let us understand the first term. That is how all these costs are going to affect and how we can minimize. Okay. So we can say that C M T we have an equation that C M T is equal to W plus E into T M, where W is a Wages which are given to the operator or a worker which operates the machine tool. Okay, this would be in rupees per minute. So for one minute, we are going to consider E is the cost of operating machine tool per unit time, which means in one minute, how much is the cost for operating a machine tool? And TM is a machining time that would be in minutes. Okay, so we can say that during a machining time, we need to pay the worker as well as we are going to pay. The cost of operating a machine tool, which means W plus E. Now this is operated in one. This is a cost for one minute. Now the total machining time could be anything in minutes, right? So we need to multiply by TM. So the total cost of machining time will be W plus E into TM. Okay. Similarly, we can say that cost of non-productive time, that is C and PT, which would be equal to W plus E into T and PT, which means what does non-productive time include? So as we know that it is going to include the loading and unloading of a workpiece, loading and unloading of a cutting tool, right? Then we can say ideal travel of a cutting tool to provide for approach and over travel, even travel of a cutting tool before commencement of a cut, right? Then travel of a cutting tool after commencement of a work. So during this time period, we would say that no machining operation is performed even though our machine is going to run at a definite speed, which means power consumption is taking place, right? Similarly, we are going to pay the worker in minutes, right? So even for a non-productive time, we are paying the worker. So how much cost we are going to incur because of this non-productive time? So it would be W plus E into T and PT. Okay, so this cost we need to minimize. Okay, now next is CTC. Now what is CTC? So CTC is a tool changing cost per component. So for one component, how much is a tool changing cost that is represented by CTC? So the equation for this is W plus E into TC upon Q. So it is very obvious that TC is a time required for replacing the blunt tool or we would say time taken for regrinding the tool. We know that once a tool is, uh, we would say it has been rubbed, so we need to regrind that tool. Again, we need to sharpen the tool. So that time which is taken to regrind the tool is called a TC, that is a time required for replacing the blunt tool and setting a new one. And Q is a number of component which this tool can machine. Okay, so how much a cost that is incurred because of this tool changing? So we can say we are going to pay the worker as well during that time period 
as well as a machine in go machine is also going to operate right that is it is going to consume the electricity it is going to consume the power so the cost incurred would be w plus e into tc divided by q so why we are going to divide by q because during this time period there could be a two components machine there could be a three components four components so this is the cost for one component so for that we need to divide by total number of components which are machined okay next cost is pt which is equal to t by q where we would say again q is a number of components and t represents the tool cost okay so this is a tool cost for a period equal to the tool life now the question comes at what is tool life so the life or a time between a two successive grindings or between a two successive regrindings is called a tool life okay so that cost also we need to consider that is ct so the total cost of a machining included is a machining cost that is cmt cost for non productive time that is cnpt then tool changing cost per component that is ctc and ct that is tool cost per component so remember our aim is to minimize the cost price we minimize the machining cost and how we can do that by controlling the three main parameters speed speed and depth of cut let us see further so as you can see on your screen that if a machining cost equation which is which we have seen previously is optimized then it is going to yield a particular value of a tool life which corresponds to a minimum machining cost even we can conclude this from a generalized equation of a tool life even you would have studied the taylor's tool life equation during your manufacturing process one right so according to that the tool life equation can be represented as capital t is equal to capital c upon b raised to a into s raised to b into t raised to c where capital t stands for tool life c capital c stands for a constant value and v now over your v is a cutting speed s is a feed rate and t is a depth of cut okay so you can clearly see that the tool life is dependent on these three parameters okay that is cutting speed feed and depth of cut now all these parameters has a power that is a b and c are constant over here which means in order to obtain an optimum tool life we can clearly say for a particular operation we need to optimize the value of a cutting speed feed and depth of cut if these three parameters are optimized then we can get an optimum to optimum tool life and it is very obvious even from our previous equation of a cost that is minimum cost in that also we need to optimize which three parameters that is this three that is cutting speed feed and depth of cut so these are interrelated with each other okay so remember our aim in this is to minimize the cost price and to optimize the tool life okay now let's see further also we know that machine tool requires a high torque when starting even though they are performed at a lower speed now when we start our machine tool from rest right when we give a power to the electric motor so it is going to run at a constant fixed rpm right but during starting of our spindle or during starting of our machine we need to provide more torque high torque is required to rotate the spindle right other otherwise it could not be rotated the weight of a spindle is much higher for that high torque is required to make it rotate at that time it is accompanied by lowering the speed for that we need to reduce the speed but the motor is running at a fixed rpm right so how we can reduce the speed so by making use of a device that is called a gearbox so over here the new term gearbox is going to come in a picture okay on the other end when a machine is running at a higher speed okay when it is running at a top speed for performing a particular operation let's say roughing cut okay or a finishing cut so at that time higher torque is not required why because it already possesses high momentum it has already the high cutting speed high velocity because of that velocity because of that speed high torque is not required so over here you need to remember that when a machine tool is at a rest we need to provide high torque and this is accomplished only by lowering the speed okay whereas at a high speed automatically uh, we uh, we would say high torque is not required why because the momentum is already higher so fr from this we can conclude that there is a requirement of a device which can change the machine tool torque 
as well as the speed according to the type of machining operation or when an operator needs it okay so this device which is required is called a gearbox okay so i hope that you are clear that why a gearbox is required we are going to see detail with uh, i am going to give a detailed explanation on need of multi speed gearbox so this is our next topic let's see now why multi speed gearbox is required in machine tools okay now as we know that in machine tools different operations are performed like turning operation facing operation drilling operation boring threading etc which are required to be carried out on our workpiece now all these operations for example thread cutting operations are is required to be performed at a lower speed okay roughing operation roughing cut or we would say rough, rough turning is required to perform at a high speed right whereas finishing operation requires a particularly higher speed than a roughing cut right so all these operations require different speeds different rpms that is revolution per minute but what is the main problem the main problem is that our electric motor is running at a fixed rpm right so our target over here is that in order to optimize the tool life and to minimize the machining cost each machining operation is required to be carried out at a specific cutting speed therefore different machining operation requires a different spindle speeds okay that is a different rpm now let us understand by taking an equation so we know that for any operation the cutting speed is given by the equation v is equal to pi dn by 1000 meter per minute over here we have divided by 1000 because diameter we are going to take in this equation in millimeters okay so for converting it to it into meter we need to divide by 1000 okay now from this equation we can make rpm as a subject that is revolution per minute small n as a subject so equation is going to become n is equal to 1000 v upon pi d which would be in revolution per minute rpm okay now from this equation it is very clear that even in case of a machine tools which is performing only single operation let's take an example that a only a turning operation is performed in a machine tool i have shown over here in a diagram you can see there is an electric motor and we have used a multi speed gearbox it is connected to our spindle shaft okay and the work piece is folded within a chuck okay three jo chuck so in this we can it is very clear that cutting tool is going to perform a horizontal motion along its axis that is a feed is going to be provided let's say the diameter of our work piece is capital d as you can see on your screen and the work piece is rotating that is a cutting speed is v okay so from this we can say that even if we are going to perform a turning operation if we change the diameter of a work piece we need to provide a different spindle speed to our work piece why because you can see from this equation for a particular operation v is going to remain constant cutting speed is going to remain constant but uh, if diameter is going to be changed then we can say the rpm that is revolution per minute of a spindle is going to be changed so from this we can clearly say that even for a same type of operation carried out on a machine tool if diameter of a work piece is different then we require a different spindle speed hence machine tool has to be operated at a different spindle speed and we know that motor is going to be operated at a, at a fixed rpm so for that what we required we required a multi speed gearbox so i hope guys that you are clear that why multi speed gearbox has to be provided in a machine tool okay we to operate to obtain a different spindle speed so in today's session we have discussed about aim of speed and feed regulations and need of multi speed gearbox in a machine tool in our next session we will start with our progression laws that is we are going to see different types of laws uh, arithmetic progression law geometric progression law then harmonic progression and logarithmic progression so till then stay tuned and thank you all